When a brown girl child is born, the earth shifts. The sun is at half mask. The moon waits for her first cry. The ancestors set the table. The flowers turn red as blood. This is your land, continent daughter. With tree trunk legs and branches for arms, this is your soil. Black and fertile as your eyes facing an apartheid Jim Crow current past memory. Some of us begin the removal of shackles at birth. We grow into the armor of struggle quickly. We brew courage in our tea, blend bravery into our Sunday dinners. Joanne Watson, you understand nation building is not a part-time job. This dedicated life is sometimes lonely, a vulnerable choice, but it is the only way you know how to operate. You are wired for the movement in your black women bones, even when tired, still fighting, still organizing, still singing morning spirituals. You are born to lead, even in your own family, the eldest of 10 children born to Jefferson and Lestine. You made Damon Nefertari, Stephen, Maya, her children always knew she was larger than life. When you are a woman in the movement, you take the children with you on the journey. You bring the babies with you to your college classes. When you travel to Ghana for the first time, it will be with your daughters in tow. When you are a fearless, nationalist, thinking mama, mothering never stops with your own babies. 30 God children and mentees across the globe. The daughter of a ministering mother is already ordained for good trouble. A seer, a prophetic young student preparing for her lifelong role as servant to her own community. When your purse was snatched in a Farmer Jack parking lot many years ago with your kids' tickets to run DMC in the purse, you made sure they still got to that concert and even hosted Melly Mel and the Furious Five in your living room because queens make it look easy. When you're a single mom, people will tell you what you can't do. Instead, you move to New York City where all four of your C's to do your necessary work with the YWCA because queens make it look easy. Ghana, Togo, South Africa, where is your heart, Mama Watson? Nurturing spirit, baking melt in your mouth, homemade biscuits. How many hours do you sleep, Warrior Watson, with endless work ethic and blue collar blood racing through your veins? How do we say thank you for your your work, your time, your heart. We know you will never really retire. There is a fire on the path to freedom. There is smoke, there is sacrifice. There are stories of justice, of women, of Tubman, Sojourner, of Angela, Asada, Coretta, and Merle, and Betty, and Queen Mother Moore. Some of us know we are ancient, that our marrow is laced with legacy, that we are here to bring light to our daughters. Sometimes it just takes one woman, a mother, a grandmother, a spitfire, a griot, a sister, the only only woman to leave at NAACP's largest chapter. She, daughter of the movement of Rosa, of Irma. She was a birth that gave birth to possibility for other young activists like me, a true D woman, frontline Fatima, Nigerian blood, councilwoman, leader, truth teller, Joanne Watson, social worker, president of the anti-clan network, sister inspiration, dedicated to the protection of girls and the voices of women wrapped in West African beauty, regal and resilient, Wake up, Detroit. Wake up, South Africa. Wake up, Cuba. Wake up, small business owners. Wake up, White House. Wake up, reparations. Wake up, teachers. Wake up, women. Wake up, schools. Sleeping is not an option when the Honorable Joanne Watson is in the room. Wake up, Detroit. I'm Joanne Watson. This is the day the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. I don't know about you. I can't let one day go by without praising his name. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. We know it is God who made us and not we ourselves. So that's what they're doing in the morning time. But to say good morning, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We worship you and you alone. You are the power that drives us, that wakes us, that gives us peace, that gives us love, that gives us joy. And we start off this day acknowledging the most significant presence and spirit in the universe. And that is the most high God. Without God, we would not be able to do anything. It is God who made us in his image and his likeness. And so we start off at the source, at, at the powerhouse, and we come to the throne of grace to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's good to give thanks to whom honor is due. It is good to acknowledge the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We start off this day acknowledging who gives us breath, who gives us eyes to see and ears to hear and a mouth to talk and legs to walk, a, mind, a divine mind to think and to compute. Who is it who's given us the opportunity to have access to all of the benefits of this world? Because we're not just flesh, we're spiritual. We're spiritual beings having a flesh experience, and our spirit selves are the most important part of us. It's that spirit, hallelujah, that's connected intimately with the Most High God. So we declare ourselves at one, at one, with that spirit, A-T-O-N-E, at one. And we atone for all things that have been following flesh, lust, those things that are not of God, and we repent of them. We want to start off this day with a clean slate. We thank God. We praise God. We honor God. When we do that, we sweep away the debris of yesterday. We wipe away the clutter of missteps, misstatements, misdeeds. We go forward with a brand new day, a day we've never seen before and never see again. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Don't spend time looking in the rearview mirror of what went wrong yesterday, last year, last month. Last decade. Don't spend all of your time forecasting what you want for tomorrow. Or the year after that, or the year after that, let us live for today. Live for this day. Concentrate on this day. What shall we render unto God for all his mercy? What shall we render unto God for all he has done for us? It is good to take time to pray. And when you pray, go into that, that special, special place, that closet where you can have silence, where you can have quiet, no distractions, no disturbances, where you can come together with all your thoughts that are divinely led and focus on, on the words of the Most High God. And if you need a place to start, start with the 90th Psalm, the 91st Psalm. Uh, Psalms, Proverbs, uh, anything that is uh, scriptural, whatever helps you rise up and get to your highest level of, of spiritual opportunity, that's where you should begin. There's a wonderful scripture in Habakkuk 2, write the vision, make it plain. And the vision is yet for an appointed time. We have an opportunity when we just sit and declare ourselves at one with the Lord. And we say, here am I, Lord. And sit in the silence and wait, wait on the voice of the Lord to give us direction and, when necessary, correction. And go out and fulfill the assignment that you have been given for this day. Do it with joy with peace, with a sense of opportunity. It is good, it is good to fulfill the assignments that have been passed on to us from the Most High God. We're not here for ourselves. We didn't get here by ourselves. And when we take the time to create a, a harvest based on seeds we plant on behalf of the Most High God, then you never have want. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. That 23rd Psalm uh, becomes very real to you when you start off the day with prayer and praise and worship. When you read the Word, and the Word is holy, the Word is been manifested by the divine presence of God. Uh, when you take the time to go within, take time and go within your deepest self and meditate. Take deep breaths and meditate. Clean your mind of anything that is negative, that is uh, not godly, that is impure, and focus on those things that are righteous. When we have our day set forth with God at the beginning, then God will be with us all through the day. And when we recline at night, the night will not become your cooling board because you've already 
Uh, think of yourself. You point at yourself in, in the garden that is led by our mind. We praise God. And we don't do it with any trepidation. We honor God. We don't do it as an afterthought. We acknowledge the one who made us, the one who's given us the breath of life, the one who's given us the blood running through our veins. Hallelujah. The one who has made us in his image, in his likeness. The one who has said we have the right to declare those things that we want to have harvested in our kingdom. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. The prayer of your bags. And enlarge my coats, and that your hand might be with me, that it might keep me from hurt or harm. And the Lord granted that which he asked. Even when you have reached the end of your days, you can turn to the wall like King Hezekiah did in Second Kings 20. He turned to the wall and he prayed and he said, Oh Lord, I've been a good servant, Lord. Not perfect, but I've been serving you all of my days. I ask that you give me some more time. I ask that you allow me to fulfill some more of the needs of my kingdom. I ask that you give me just a little more time. And the Lord God gave him 15 more years because he turned to the wall, he prayed, and he asked. And he did not ask with uh, any sense that it would not happen. He asked with a strong sense of belief. And as it was already done, when we ask, let us ask believing, believing, seeing, visioning, it is already done. And seeing ourselves as worthy, seeing ourselves as God's special children, as birthright, as heirs to the throne, we are blessed to be in the land of the living. We don't want to squander one day. We don't want to waste one hour. We don't want to go forth following somebody else's agenda. Let's be still and know that he is God all by himself. We certainly want to invite you every Sunday to worship with us at Westside Unity Church. That's 4727 Joy Road between Dexter and Grand River. Uh, we believe in the power of prayer and the power of healing. We bear witness to healing that has come forth, to prosperity that has come forth. We bear witness to families coming back together. We bear witness to the increases that come. When you put God first, everything else falls into place. When you put God first, you have access to peace. When you put God first, you have access to uh, all the blessings that God holds in the storehouse. And the blessings that are identified in Beatitudes, Matthew 5, are blessings that are good for us to turn to on this day. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are you when men shall persecute you for, for the Lord's sake, for great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We thank God for the, the be attitudes, the be attitudes, those attitudes uh, bring blessings. They bring joy. They bring peace. Isn't it good to have that cloak of peace, that garment of righteousness? Isn't it good to step into uh, the community uh, with with your prayer clothes on? Because you've been prayed up. You have been engaged in meditation. You've been engaged in uh, that silent prayer. You've been in that special closet where you've talked to God with no, dis no disturbance and no distraction. You've taken the time to just be still and know that God is God all by himself. It is we who need God, not God who needs us. 
so it is good to not get so busy with the world's busyness that you don't take the necessary time to connect, hallelujah, to be immersed in the spirit and in the presence of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is here. You can feel it in the atmosphere. The spirit of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. You can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. You can feel it in the atmosphere. All the power of the Lord is here. We have some power coming on strong. In a couple of minutes, as we're going to have a very special guest, Dr. Ava Muhammad, who is the national spokesperson of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, will be our very special guest in just a few moments. So we want you to fasten your seatbelts and get ready for more Wake Up Detroit right after this. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life, I was a resident of Wayne County, and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Sabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plans and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan? It's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. It's Savior's Day 2020, and you're invited to hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Black people of Detroit. Sunday, February 23rd in the TCF Center. Don't miss the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan live. You are a very, very special people. Sunday, February 23rd at 2 p.m. in the TCF Center. Get your tickets and all the details now at NOI.org. Detroit during that period and not have been impacted directly 
by the magnificent presence of the nation. So I, I bear witness that uh, I am whoever I am that's positive. It's uh, because of what has been poured into me and among the uh, forces of positivity that are poured into me certainly has been the nation of Islam. I owe much to those brothers. I remember mm -hmm. uh, the, the few watching us walk home from school and protecting us. I remember uh, the, the bakery and the, uh, my first slice of bean pie. I remember <laughs> reading Muhammad's speech and learning about the, the ten things that we demanded. I remember now all of that helped to uh, really carry me into the movement at, at, in my teen years. So I'm great. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I am uh, happy to announce that uh, the, uh, among the major events that will be taking place uh, next weekend are a town hall meeting at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, and that will happen on Saturday, February 22nd. Now, the convention will be at the TCF Convention Center, but since June of 2018, the Nation of Islam began hosting town hall meetings across America. And we believe it is time that we must, Sister Joanne, yes. consider separation. My, my, my. You know, I was reading in uh, the Chicago Tribune, they did a, Washington Post did a poll about Donald Trump mm. among black people. Mm. And what's interesting to me is now 83% of the people polled felt he was a racist. But here's the, here's the question that struck me. Two out of three said it is, quote, a bad time to be black. Now, that, that's a profound and disturbing statement because I don't know that there's ever been a bad time to be white hmm. in America. The, the very fact somebody formulated that question and the fact that it drew uh, two-thirds of a response that our people feel it is a bad time to be black in America. And that can only emanate from the fact that we still remain a subject people over 150 years after slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Detroit is the, percentage-wise, we know it's the blackest city in America. And it is absolutely against the will of God that we would uh, have those kind of numbers and we're not controlling our own destiny. We must control we our own. We have to do that. We must. And uh, how long? Dr. King used to say, how long? Some more, yes, he did. How long? Before we wake up and we yes. determine and we self-determine our destiny. How long? And it's not a racist concept. That every people, and even the animals and birds and insects, you always take care of your own kind first. And then, of course, you interact with the rest of nature. But we want to hear from black people in the city uh, their thoughts on the subject of self-determination. And we're bringing in some very uh, profound scholars and leaders who are engaged in the methodology of going for self. And one of our panelists I am so honored to announce is yourself, because we can't have a town hall meeting on separation and not have a star member of the Detroit community. We also have a young sister, Dr. Cheryl Mango. She's a professor at Virginia State, and she has uh, written papers and done extensive research on the black experience in America and particularly the Muslim program that you referred to yeah. on the back of the Sonicron newspaper. 
you know, everything outlined there, that we uh, want to have land that we can call our own because we are the major contributors to America's wealth. That's right. We want uh, to, we don't want to be taxed. We feel that we should be exempt from taxes. We have never been compensated in any way, shape, or form. America has paid reparations to nations she's been to war with. That's right. And, and we have supported her in all her wars. We have a brother on the panel who's from Coldwater, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Brother Patrick Alexander, Alexander, and he heads the Black Liberation Movement there in Coldwater. I was down there, Sister Joanne, and this is a black township with a black mayor, black police department, <laughs> black educational system. Uh, they're, they're independent in every way they can be. And he can talk about the reality of what Minister Farrakhan asked us to do in 2015, and that is make our own communities a safe and decent place to live. My, my, my. And then we're bringing in uh, Dr. Aaron Smith from Temple University in Philadelphia. And he's an expert on this process of gentrification my, my. that is pushing us out of America's cities and how we can reverse that process. And uh, so it's, it's not a lecture. I want everybody to understand that. We're going to be at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, that beautiful church, and it's a meeting. It, we're going to discuss with our uh, audience and participants, hear from the people, and, you know, going around the country, we've had uh, black people as young as seven years old get up and address the gathering no, no, no. On, on the subject of self-determination. Well, self-determination should certainly be on the front page of our agenda as, uh, as God's first people, God's original people. We have to recognize that, that we were not put here to be victims uh, or uh, uh, to serve others. We are to put God first and honor our people, take care of our families, and honor our history. And in a city like Detroit, which is the home, the headquarters, the foundation for the nation of Islam, and the, the shrine of the black Madonna, mm -hmm. and the Republic of New Africa, yes. the, the blackest mayor this nation has ever had, the Honorable mm -hmm. Carmen Alexander Young, who was one of yes. my mentors. When we yes. consider Dr. Mario Bedelli, then known as Richard Henry, the founder of the Republic of New Africa, and his brother Reverend Milton Henry, a great freedom fighter. And Mother Rosa Parks lived here more years than oh, she lived right. in Montgomery, Alabama. We love Mother Parks. She called me one of her children. When you consider all of the uh, black roads that have come together, including organized labor, so the uh, black people yeah. helped found the UAW. It didn't just get started. A black man named Dave Moore was a co-founder of the UAW. He picked up Mother Parks at the airport when she came here to work for Congressman John Connors for almost 25 years, which saved her family, which was threatened in Alabama. They had to leave Alabama to save their lives. That's right. So we, uh, it was reparations, Ray Jenkins. I gave him that name when he called my radio show every day, talking about reparations. <laughs> it was reparations, Ray Jenkins, who told Congressman Connors he needed to introduce H.R. 40, the reparations study bill. It was no longer a study bill. Now it is a bill designed to implement the reparations so rightfully due. Africans in America. And so we're going to honor uh, Representative Conyers this weekend, too, during the convention. Praise God. Yes. His last public appearance uh, was also a wonderful conference where Minister Farrakhan came That's in right. Cobra National Convention last June. That's exactly right. My, 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 Congressman Conyers, who had just turned 90 a month earlier and accepted a Lifetime Achievement Award from Cobra. I shall never forget it. And it was such such an honor. His his son now John the Third escorted him to the to the convention, it, and then for us to have Conyers at lunchtime and the minister in the evening, as he received the Lifetime Achievement Award, it was serendipity. We were we were absolutely thrilled 
and we're going to be thrilled next week as all roads lead to Detroit for this major weekend. And let me not forget that uh, the meeting, uh, the town hall meeting, does, it is from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And obviously there's no tickets, it's free admission. It's a meeting of the black folks in Detroit. And um, it, we, we have a, a habit of starting our meetings on time and ending them on time. I love it. Because we, we respect people's time. And the point is the shot of the black man is on Linwood and Hogarth. And uh, right. Detroit is no, it's just uh, north of uh, West Grand Boulevard. And uh, the Shrine of the Black Madonna is, is a perfect place to have a town hall okay. meeting for a community family discussion on self-determination. Okay. Where do we go from here? It's about time uh, yeah, that we had a wake-up yeah, call. we got to stop. I have grandchildren now, and I just can't resign them to another generation of police murders Come and protests and lead in our water and uh, horrible facilities and not learning anything, using public schools as a pipeline to the prison, prison industrial complex. That's right. Well, I, we, we, this has to stop. This is an outrage. And we have to uh, really own up to the responsibility that's in our hands. Mm-hmm. These are our children. Th- thank you. Th- th- we can't wait for somebody else to do. We are it. It's against the law of nature. Come on now. To expect other people to take care of your offspring. And th- we're the only people that are always crying out, where's the youth? Where's the youth? A- as though there's something other than us. Right. right? Right. They should be in our protection. That's where they should be. Come on, somebody. And until they can develop enough to go out in the world with a strong-rooted knowledge of self, and then we should be able to provide them with, with jobs and, and start them off in entrepreneurship. That's we it. We're doing that in slavery. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And when you, when you consider... Uh, that uh, the building and the development and the institutionalization of even the historically black colleges were done in a much earlier era. People need people, people are not building now the way they did at the turn of the century. Precisely. Well, the reality is the integration destroyed us because it turned us into a nation of consumers. Integration actually is our freedom to spend all our money with white America. Not That's what integration mind. is. We, you're right. In segregation, in every city uh, that, that we've been in, someone would speak at the panel, and, and we will have that this week, where you can talk about all of the flourishing businesses during segregation. The civil rights movement, what, what our parents were looking for was to be out from under the debilitation of Jim Crow. Right. They weren't trying to just sit next to Heather having lunch. The, the purpose of the protest was to say, we are human beings, and we're tired of stepping off the sidewalk when we see a white person. We are tired of our schools going without heat. Hey. In the winter, we didn't say we want to mix with them. We just said we want quality facilities in our communities. And, and some, of us, some of us don't know our own history. I run into we people don't. all the time in Detroit who are not aware that there was once a Paradise Valley district, uh, oh, yeah. a black bottom area where we own black hotels, where we own black pharmacies, where we own black bakeries, where we own our, our own dry cleaners, where we own our own. And one of the reasons that the Gotham Hotel which is run by Beatrice Buck, who was one of Mayor Young's uh, best friends. One of the reasons that got started is because people like Nat King Cole, who would come here to perform for the other folk, he couldn't stay in their hotels. So we had to create our own. We, we had to uh, have people own black cemeteries here because they wouldn't let black bodies get buried in their cemetery. So the, 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 the real historical origin of due for self, self-determination it is so, and, and we have had our own, the, uh, the so-called uh, freeway expansion uh, bill that was pushed in during the Eisenhower administration, 
tore down the black business district in Detroit. Yeah. That was purposely, deliberate. That's right. And to knock out, and some of our own people are unaware that we once had a thriving, prosperous uh, level of enterprise that we owned and controlled. I, I was an infant, and I remember sitting on my uncle's shoulder as, as he took me down uh, the areas of Paradise Valley. Mm-hmm. And by the end, uh, we, we, we have to reclaim our, our minds, get our divine minds back, reclaim. and stop acting like victims. That's right. Yes, ma'am. We are so excited that uh, Dr. Ava Muhammad, uh, who's a national uh, spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, is coming with uh, great leadership as she convenes a t- national town hall meeting. Um, next Saturday. And uh, just talk to us about, you have had such a tremendous role in, in the Nation of Islam. I said, you tell us a little bit of your story, if you don't mind. Oh, y- yes, ma'am. Well, you know, I'm, I'm listening to you talk about these uh, expressways, and I, I'm a native of Columbus, Ohio, and I grew up in the 50s and 60s in a beautiful uh, black community, middle class black community. My father was a teacher, and my mother was a homemaker, though she had a college degree. And we lived in an area called Eastgate. And right adjacent to us was another beautiful black community. And these communities uh, began when uh, black people returned from World War II. A lot of my uh, friends' fathers were Tuskegee Airmen. And everybody in the community, uh, my teachers were black. Our mail carrier was black. The dentists, the stores, everything. And when they built I-70 East and West, under, as you said, the Eisenhower administration, they ran that I-70 right through the community that was adjacent to ours. Now, ours remained intact, but the one next to us was, was wiped out. They did it here in Chicago um, uh, with uh, the Dan Ryan, I-94. That's right. Right through the middle class, self-sufficient black community. Now, they could have built bypasses, which they eventually did. Sure to circle the city. They didn't have to run right through. So you said it right. But growing up there, beloved, it gave me a black consciousness. Yes. So as a young lawyer, suffering, though, having been diagnosed from cancer back in the early 1980s, I heard Minister Farrakhan in New York City. And I was, I was in love. These teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad touched every part of my being, and I came in, and the minister almost immediately put me in the ministry. I, I had never thought about, I, I'm not a pious individual, uh, I'm not even a religious person. I, <laughs> I came in the nation because of the, the uh, uh, idea of self-determination for black people, yes. but it was really being in the nation of Islam that made me appreciate and reactivate my Christian upbringing. Oh, come on now. And brought me back into my love of the Creator. And I have found from Minister Farrakhan, he is a true revolutionary. Yes. And he, he will put a woman in a position without even a second thought he, he doesn't have to uh, say, well, I'm going to make a point of finding a female, you know, to satisfy the demands of modern society. He looks at your capability, and it doesn't matter if you are young, old, male, female, it doesn't matter. He's going to put you in that position. And ultimately, he made me his uh, southern regional representative uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, over the South, uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then from there, he appointed me to be his national spokesperson. 
and it has just been a wonderful experience and a, a blessing to be able to travel uh, not only around the country but around the world my, my, my. Uh, speaking on behalf of him and the nation of Islam. It's been phenomenal. Well, you, you have been a phenomenal presence. Uh, certainly our minister had the vision, hallelujah, uh, uh, and the prophet vision to see that in you. He saw your uh, illumination. He saw uh, your potential, and he knew the kind of dynamic presence you would bring, uh, not just to the nation of Islam, but you are, you are a powerful presence for uh, our people everywhere, no matter what they're doing and who they follow. And I, I want to thank you for being a, a magnificent role model for young women. A be beautiful inside and out, knowledgeable academic. I'm always talking to young women uh, about the importance of not hiding their light. Mm. You, don't, you, you don't have to hide your intellect, your uh, uh, interest in academia, uh, because you think it doesn't make you look feminine. You are, you are divinely made, and you have the right uh, to, to be brilliant. Who are you not to be? That's right. <laughs> I want to thank you for all you have continued to do, and we are so excited about the whole weekend. We know that Friday there will be a, a gala, and I thank you for the invitation. I received my invitation. I accepted it this morning at, at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sent Sister Malik uh, uh, an email this morning accepting uh, the invitation to the 40th anniversary of the Final Call Gala. Final Call newspaper. My, my, my. Yes. Black independent publication, 40 years of consistent truth, and news to our community. Yes, ma'am. It's a magnificent, uh, and you know, you have to have a communication vehicle in order to maintain to. Uh, a touchstone with your people. Because we cannot rely on anybody else's media to tell our story. There is no freedom movement without the word. That's to right. propagate the principles of that movement. But, I mean, you can go all the way back hundreds of years from the time they develop the printing press. This is the way it gets done. And we, we are so grateful uh, to the minister for founding, among all the other incredible things he's done. He took the time, effort, and, in, and invested his personal resources in founding the Final Con newspaper, which really is the resurrection of Muhammad's speech. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So I'm going to run off here, and I I can't wait to see you, Sister Joanne. I can't wait to see you, Dr. Ava Muhammad. But God bless you, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My, my, my. Wake up, Detroit. Dr. Ava Muhammad, our very special guest, who will be joining all of us in Detroit, along with Minister Farrakhan, for a magnificent coming together on next weekend. And we thank God. We thank God for the opportunity to come together because everything started in Detroit. Everything started in Detroit. We want all of Detroit to come to the gala Friday night at 7 p.m. to the town hall meeting at 2 o'clock at the Shrine of the Black Madonna on Linwood and Hobart, and certainly to the what well, used to be Cobo and, and now is uh, uh, T. TCF. We thank God for all who are going to support this event and all who are supporting yourself. God bless the child as God is on. We thank you for being a part of our wake up call on this day. And we give God all the praise. Only God is worthy to be praised. Wake up. <laughs>